everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm photographer and cinematographer Drew Geraci, and today it's a really special day because I'm doing something that I thought really wasn't possible to ever do, and here we are 20 years later, and we are now able to create individual objects and scenes, use them as reference to create beautiful 3D um, motion graphics. And I'm using a program called Midjourney. If you haven't used Midjourney, get on it because AI is now the future. Um, the writing is all over the wall. But this is actually really incredible because we're now able to create full cinematic scenes. And I mean full cinematic scenes uh, in just a matter of minutes. And this is going to absolutely change the way the industry uh, for post-production, uh, for video, photo, everything is done. And it's mind-blowing. Um, as you can see here, I'm going to switch really quickly. Um, I've just created a bunch of different elements here inside of uh, Midjourney. These all took about five minutes to do. And really what I'm going to do is take all of these elements and then combine them together to create one single cinematic shot. And in the past, this probably would have taken me a couple days to do because I would have had to have gone out, photographed each individual object, photographed the background plates, photographed um, you know, the, uh, the foreground elements, everything and anything. But now with Midjourney, I can literally type whatever my brain thinks up and then instantly, uh, or within a few seconds, uh, I'll get that final rendered image and it's absolutely mind-boggling like it's insane i never would have thought 20 years ago like oh hey you want to think about you know building a, a candle or a book um it does it for you and it's it's absolutely um incredible uh that we have this technology now so as you can see here on my screen i've just got these elements and this is what we're going to be creating it is a a fun little library scene that i just created it took about 30 minutes to make inside of after effects and what the camera is going to be doing is just floating around these objects moving as if they're you know in cinematic space and then uh you know using dynamic lighting i'm able to control uh where that field of focus is as well as the lighting and the highlights and the brightness and the tones and i can control all of that with inside of after effects and it really gives you limitless power to create scenes um, as you want them. So if there's a specific scene where you know you want something that you don't necessarily have the ability to photograph or you don't want to pay for the stock photos, you can now do that using Midjourney. So again, this is definitely going to disrupt a lot of the industry, um, especially for stock sites, because who needs a stock site when you can literally just type in what you want and then the imagery is just created for you right there on the spot. So. Here we are, we're inside of After Effects. I'm, this is not gonna be a tutorial, by the way. This is just gonna show you my process and my workflow of how I do it. Um, I'll give you a pretty good idea of how it's done, but it's not gonna be a step-by-step -step, um, uh, progress. Uh, I will say you have to go out there. There's plenty of other uh, motion graphic tutorials out there to do this, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I did and how I implemented those um, different elements from Midjourney into After Effects to create this scene. So uh, stick around, I hope you guys do, um, because it's really interesting and again, it's game changing for this industry. So uh, the first thing we're going to do inside of After Effects is if I scrub through here, you can see that you know we can see the scene and it's compiled and I have all of these different keyframes and all of this together is what creates a cinematic uh, piece of work. Now you could use this for pre-visualization or you could actually use this for like a title sequence of a movie or a show um, because there's just so much you can do here. Now there are two different types of VFX elements that I used. Um, I did go out and film uh, my own little flame using a candle, very easy to do. And then I did have a um, bunch of stock shots of different types of fog and smoke that I actually implemented as well, um, as well as some dust. And that just gives your, your scene uh, or your composition texture and it makes it more believable when you add those types of elements to it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down and show you each individual element. So if we come here first, these are the each individual elements that I rendered out. I'm gonna open these up. So I've got some books here. Oops, there we go. And if we scroll through, then I've got my background plate, which is gonna be what the shot ends on. And then I also have these other books and some other foreground elements. Now I didn't use all of these in my shot, but I did use um, a majority of them. And um, I think that's really cool that you're able just to kind of concoct what you want and it just magically appears. So this is one of the candles that we're using in the scene as well as this one. Um, but what we have to do first is we have to go in and mask out each individual frame. And because these actually are pretty decently high resolution images, um, they're about a 2K, 2.5K resolution. Um, so that gives me a lot of latitude to work with them in VFX from the post. So if I come back into here, I'm gonna open up my candle. So this is the candle that has already been created, um, but I'm just gonna break it down how I did it. 
So you can see if we come into here, I'm going to remove the mask here. So this is the original image, and all I did was I, I went in and I just masked out the candle by itself, and then when I turn the mask on, it removes the background plate, and I did remove the flame from the original candle because I wanted to have it animated. So I went out, this took about five, 10 minutes to do, and I green screened my own candle on a backdrop, and uh, it worked pretty nice. Like, I mean, you get real flicker from it, and uh, it's, it's, it's not bad. So if you want to see that, I went ahead and I masked that out, and we can come in here. Now I've got a couple masks on here. And if you see, this is actually just the top of the another candle, but what I've done is I've masked out just the, the wick and the flame itself, and I've placed it on top of where the other, other candle would have been. And then I went ahead and subtracted that, and I can bring this back into place and there we go I've just created a beautiful little candle and it flickers by itself um, and yeah pretty easy day so one thing I will mention is that After Effects is resource hungry so you need a lot of CPU power a lot of RAM a lot of RAM and a lot of GPU power and I'm on a really beefy computer I've got 512 gigs of RAM I've got a 32 core get with a 32 core processor at 4.2 gigahertz uh, and then I've got two RTX 3090s running in tandem together and After Effects still is running slow so Adobe if you're listening this needs to get fixed. It's so slow. Um, but what I will say is that this is probably the best program to use it in. I am a uh, DaVinci Resolve user, and using Fusion will probably be my next choice to use this. But I know After Effects a lot more than I know Fusion, so this is what we're kind of left with. Um, but that being said, you really do have to have a beefy system to really be able to render this. And um, I know I'm in full right now, but if I do drop this down into a quarter view, um, I will get much better playback and no memory errors. Um, but as you can see, we just created a beautiful scene. I, I lied. I still get memory errors. Um, but it's really interesting. So we just created our first element. This literally took me about 35, 40 seconds to do. Uh, and now we're going into the, the book section. And what I did is I actually combined two of the different book sets together and just kind of neatly arranged them on the table. I masked out the background. Very easy to do. And then I actually added my own little backdrop here so I could use that as like a fake table. Now, I did use some of the elements from the original table that was created, but I needed to create uh, a nice path so that it looked like it was, uh, you know, on the same table together. And this is an easy way to fake it. Um, and then for that, really, the next part here is just going back in and then adding those different elements. So um, the biggest thing you have to worry about or that you really have to know about when you're creating motion graphics is everything is on a perspective plane. And the Z axis is really what creates and helps create that parallax motion. Uh, and parallax is important because it gives the idea and the sense of movement in the scene, especially when all of these objects are just still. You really want to make sure that they are spaced out in the Z space um, far enough so that it creates um, motion and movement. And that's really what sells the idea that, you know, the camera is floating through this. Um, realistically, the camera is literally just making a straight line through the shot. And what I am doing here is I'm actually uh, keyframing. So if we come into the candles here, you can see I'm actually keyframing a movement of their position. So what's happening is at the start and then at four seconds in, I'm actually having the candles move to the left as if they're like parting away through like water. And that's really what gives it the, the sense of motion and movement. I could have gone in here and actually done really dynamic camera movements where it's creating like an S curve. I don't got time for that. I want to make this fast, snappy, and get it done. Um, and this is the way to do it because it doesn't take that long to do. Now, what I am um, really excited about is... Uh, the fact that, you know, I can add as many different elements as I want, put them on as many different planes as I want, and just create a really dynamic and really diverse scene. And that's really what I've done. So I've just basically placed five different scenes on here. I multiplied the candle three times uh, and placed it in there. So we've got two in the foreground, one in the middle ground. Um, and then basically we've got the books as the middle background. And as the camera comes through here, what I'm also doing is I am changing the focal plane on side or sorry, inside of my camera here. Um, so where it says the focal distance, what I'm doing is I'm creating little um, spots of where I know the focus is or why I know where the subject's going to be. And so I'll change the focus from that subject to the next subject. And basically as it comes through here, it's going to find, you know, okay, so we're, we're here now. Now this candle right over here is going to be in focus. 
and then if we come through here we're going to come out of focus for that and then the books will come into focus and then so forth and so forth as we pass through the books we change the focus again so then it becomes um, you know the background that is ultimately in focus and that's what's great about this is that we can now use our creative leverage to create scenes just using still imagery and just using imagery that's created from mid-journey itself um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. And basically what I did after this is I just rendered out the scene. Um, I took it into DaVinci Resolve, color graded it, and this is what the final scene looks like. But again, this took just a matter of maybe 30 minutes total across the board to create. And it's something that I think is truly going to change the industry and really going to up the game for a lot of people and really allow people that maybe don't have the, the creative standpoint to go out and create it with uh, you know regular gear, whether it's photo or video. But now you have that ability to do that. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm actually speechless here just because this is something that I've always wanted to do and I can finally do it here at 38 years old. I can finally go in and say, hey, I want to create a mystical castle and I want to have the camera fly through a different part of that castle um, and create the elements for that castle. And you can now do that. Um, so, guys, get out there, have some fun, play around. You know, the world is endless now, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did like what you see, please like, subscribe, and as always, happy shooting or happy AI generating, you know? Cheers, guys.